Hey, what's up guys, it's number one Pred here, and today what I'll be bringing you guys is an unsupported quad chem strike. Yes, you heard me correctly, uh, unsupported quad chem strikes. So four chem strikes in one game without any usage of support. So, this is a pretty goddamn sick gameplay if you ask me. This gameplay was actually done in about April of 2014, so an actual while back from the time now I'm doing the commentary and uploading it, so, you know, I've been extremely lazy and decided not to upload it until now, when I really do need to upload it, so, this is gameplay is also done with the Bison, which makes this gameplay pretty much 5 to 10 times better, because it's not with the Honey Badger, which is obviously the most used gun in the game for support, as well as the fact that this isn't support, so, you know, in a situation for multiple chem strikes, what I meant is that the honey badger would be the most common weapon to use since it's the most versatile and uh, obviously OP. So you, you don't expect this every day. So a quad chem strike with the bison unsupported. Now I think that deserves a like rating. So if we could hit 40 to 50 likes on this video, that would be absolutely insane. I hope you guys can, you know, help me achieve that. I'm pretty sure it's doable because you guys are sick with the support. So. If you guys can, make sure to drop that right now. So, anyways, what I'm going to be talking about in this gameplay, uh, just the fact that it, is, it, it wasn't support, because obviously there was one guy using support, however I did not pick up any ballistic vests. He didn't use an Oracle or a UAV, SATCOM, whatever, so um, I didn't benefit of that. So, basically what I'm saying is that I think he was using like a, just, a, just a set of ballistic vests on their own and I didn't pick up any of them so I didn't benefit from any support which makes it unsupported and I was in a 6 man, yes I know, I was playing with a bunch of friends casually you can see me running around the map like I don't really care I mean towards, you know, towards like from now onwards I stay towards A because obviously that's the smartest place to go uh, to get the most kills when you're at their flag obviously in their spawn so I stayed around there for the rest of the game. My teammates, you know, were you know lenient enough to allow me to stay there on my own. I didn't ask them to. Just my good friends Josh and Jack and others who were there, did as gamers, um, allowed me to stay in the spawn um, on my own. Just completely voluntary. I didn't ask anyone to, you know, hold spawns for me. But you know, they did. So thank you guys for that. That is a quick chem strike I've got, unsupported with a bison, which is sick. So yeah. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this gameplay while I'm going to talk about something that quite might interest you in the background. So basically what I'm going to be talking about today is a zombie apocalypse and what you'd do in theory, or what I would do in theory, if one ever occurred. I mean obviously this is obviously theoretical speech, this isn't obviously going to, I'm saying obviously a lot, this isn't going to happen because, you know, there's no cases of uh, zombieism, <laughs> zombieism if that's a word, there's no case cases of zombies around ever and I'm pretty sure there won't be but don't worry about it guys I'm just saying if there was so basically the weapon you'd want to, you know the most common weapon to use would be a gun but obviously since I'm in the UK um, it's illegal to use a gun without a license unless like obviously you're using it to you know shoot down birds animals whatever skeet shooting and stuff like that and obviously putting down animals as well which I don't agree with but there you go um, but just as the general public you're not allowed to carry a gun with you and they're not easy to get in the UK unless you're in gangs and you have links and stuff like that but that's a completely different story so I'm just gonna you know do this from my point of view so if I was in my house and there was a horde of zombies imminent to my house very 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 shortly so I would only have like cutlery and knives and a pitchfork so the pros and cons of that a knife would be nice and nice and silent um, you could stab them and you just you know they wouldn't alert any other zombies so that would be useful and uh, a pitchfork would be even better because the problem with a knife is that if you stab them if the blood is contagious in any way shape or form most likely the blood will splatter over you as you stab your knife into them um, which won't be good because then that obviously infects you but when you use a pitchfork you'll have a, like a decent range between you so you can stab them and uh, probably won't get splattered by the blood in the process which is obviously helpful however a problem with the pitchfork is that if you stab them with enough, if it, with enough force you'll probably end up getting it lodged into their bodies and when you try and yank it back out it'll be a bit of a struggle depends how their body reacts to it if it you know holds it in or whether it's you know, just a slippy 
body, which I'm pretty sure it won't, because I'm pretty sure if you get, you know, a pitchfork stabbed into you, you're going to struggle getting it back out, so that's going to be a struggle, and if you're in, like, a horde of zombies um, coming towards you, and you have a pitchfork stuck in a zombie, and that's your only weapon left, I'm going to say you're pretty much stuffed, so that won't be, you know, useful in all cases, but if you're, like, one-on-one, -on -one, then obviously that'd be useful. And as I was saying, I don't have a gun, but if I did, a gun wouldn't be a great option either, because if you had, you know, most likely you would have had a pistol, you would, you know, most likely not have a silencer. And obviously not having a silencer alerts a lot of people, and it makes a massive noise when you shoot it. You just go bang, bang, and, you know, I'm pretty sure across the other side of the town we'll be able to hear a gunshot. Um, so, you know, any zombies within, you know, the... The given area will be able to be alerted and then we'll follow that direction of sound. So that won't help at all unless you have like a LMG with like 5,000 bullets, then obviously you'll be set for a little while, which would be good. But um, that's not really going to happen. But what I'd actually use personally is I'd have, a, I'd have a pocket knife and I'd cover myself up with some, you know, waterproof jackets and gear from what I can retrieve from a house, like hats and gloves and etc. etc. Um, I'll also try and find, make it like a balaclava out of a hat so it doesn't go on my face either if blood does obviously occur to go over my face so that'd be useful but um, yeah what I'd actually use is a treadmill I have a treadmill in my mum's bedroom she uses it often and sometimes I do um, what I would do I'd stick it at the front door um, through the front door frame and if there's a horde of zombies you know chasing me and I'll you know lure them into my house and what the treadmill would do it wouldn't be lethal but it would just be so much of a struggle and a pain in the ass for them to get in so what I'd do is face it the opposite way and make you know make it so it goes on full speed and when they try and run in the door they'll run on the treadmill obviously and then they'll go flying backwards and obviously they would recover and you know stand back up but they would never ever get in and obviously zombies aren't exactly the brightest out there so they'll pretty much just be continuously coming back in and in, in the meantime you'll be you know it'd be a good distraction point I mean when there's too many of them they'll eventually run over it and break it they'll run on each other and uh, you know as crazy as they are they'll end up breaking it and end up getting through but I reckon by that amount of time you'd have enough time to figure something out and figure out a nice escape route um, maybe if they do end up breaking in basement is the best way to go my basement is actually a pretty good idea because um, it's kind of narrow and if I said like with a pitchfork or whatever um, that would be a good idea because um, a pitchfork would be able to block the entrance and as I said it's narrow so they won't be able to overtake each other it'll literally be single file going in and uh, also there's like a nice little escape route out of my uh, basement and um, there's like a little hole in the ceiling with like a rope on it it's not really a rope but it, it's sort of what if there's like a like a dra not drown if it's like flooding down there there's like a pipe that sucks it up and releases it back out into the front garden so I'll climb up that and climb out the little hole um, out the front presuming they won't be there out waiting out the front because obviously they'll be piling in through the front door so I'll climb out there and then make my getaway and if worse does come to worse then I do have a handy blowtorch and a, a bottle of wine somewhere in the house I can just light that up and throw at the front door just to make a you know complete pool of fire which they'll run into and pretty much die instantly so well not instantly but they'll die and they'll scream in pain and they won't be focused on killing me as much so uh, yeah that pretty much be what I would do let me know what you guys would do in the comment section down below and what your basic strategy would be if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to hit that like button if you did have an awesome day and peace